And hello, this is Team Apollon's episode one of Chef Pete, head strength coach at Apollon, and Jill, director and chief operating officer, chief executive, and um, junior marketing officer. <laughs> uh, we're going to try Pete's homemade 2019. Bordeaux blend, Cabernet 70%, Sauvignon Cabernet, Sauvignon 70%, Merlot 30%. These grapes um, are from California. It is a natural, well, I don't know what happened in the vineyard, to be honest. Um, who knows? Um, they claim to have been organically grown, no pesticides. I wasn't there. But let's say that the guy didn't lie to me where I bought them and uh, they're organic. I got them, I crushed them, I pressed them. Um, I'm out of oak barrels, so these are unoaked, which is obviously not the way I would like to do it, but given certain life circumstances at the moment, it is what it is. Anyway, let's get to the wine because we're gonna try it with a piece of chocolate. So this wine, Jill, I'll go first. Yes. All right, let's give it a swirl. There it is again, wet basement. Wet basement. I mean, it definitely smells like my mother's basement. Yes, it does. You know? Yeah. Which amazes me. I don't know if the, now, I don't know if the basement smells like the wine. Cause when I walk in now, even though we haven't made wine since last October, you could still smell, I guess it like gets in the it air. gets in the air. Lead. Yeah. So I don't know if the basement smells like the wine or the wine smells like the basement. The wine smells like the basement. It definitely feels, I know there's no smell to powerful, but it's like a robust Cabernet Sauvignon leather, leather lots of leather. Yeah. In fact, so much leather. My grandfather used to have a pair of black you know, whatever they were, leather shoes, like his best pair of shoes that he would wear on like Sunday, mm -hmm. that they smell like the shoes. The shoes. Now, don't ask me why as a kid I was smelling his shoes, but for some reason, that's definitely my grandfather's shoes. <laughs> so that's what I smell. And I mean, don't get me wrong. There's a lot of black fruit in there, like blackberries and, and I don't smell blueberries so much. But, oh, yeah, um, like black plums and black. If you took black plums and blue black berries and baked it into a pie, that's what I smell. I definitely smell the basement. You smell the basement? Yeah, yeah. and the shoes. Yeah. It's like you walk in to the basement, and that's the first thing you see are these leather shoes. Old school. That are like a little wet. Mm. And like the leather's just been kind of like that's the, really worn in. That's the Cabernet Brie. Yeah. The Merlot was just there to give the... And then definitely um, blackberries and alcohol. You smell alcohol. <laughs> <laughs> it was Okay, so that's, that's a little astringent. Now, the alcohol in this, the, the, the bricks of the grapes, when I got the bri grapes, was 24. So usually a simple math is you kind of cut that in half. And if it's 24 bricks, that usually means that the alcohol content should be about 12%, mm -hmm. which for a Cabernet Sauvignon, Merlot, Bordeaux, you know, 12%, 12 and a half is really the correct number. Yeah. I don't, so this should be 12%. Um, maybe it's a little astringent because if it had been oaked, the oak, spending time in the oak would have taken that astringency and reduced it. Yeah. sort of dissipated it you know it sort of mellows the wine mm -hmm. but this was only in glass carboys mm. and then in a glass and then am i boring you uh, yeah all right i guess that's the end of episode <laughs> one i'm boring jill she's yawning at my wine description uh, all right no i'm just try. getting i'm yawning because i want to get you to start drinking it oh Gary Vaynerchuk taught me that. Yeah. I know it's supposed to aerate the wine, but it doesn't really do anything for me. Oh, okay. So you, are you just going to do it for the effect? Yeah. Okay. Just for the video. Yeah. Um, man, 
I'll tell you, that's freaking delicious. Um, it's definitely like a blueberry pie, but you didn't put the blueberries in it. Instead, you faked everybody out and you put like black um, be- blackberries and black licorice in there. So it's not a blueberry pie. It's not. It's a blackberry pie. It's a it's a blackbird pie. You put birds in it too. <laughs> yeah. You ever see that cartoon? I forget. Oh my god, it's a great cartoon with the two blackbirds. What was the name of uh, those guys? Oh my god, it was hysterical. I'm thinking of Pixar. That Pixar no, short film. No, no, this is back the in the day. I'm gonna have to look it up. It's two. It's two blackbirds. They were hysterical, but um, that's really good. I'm gonna try it with the chocolate. Wow, you're a terrible co-host. You're you're terrible. Well, you gotta like explain it more. Well, the chocolate, chocolate with the wine. What is it like with the chocolate with the wine? Mm. Wow, like cardamom. Orgasm? Cardamom. Mm, it's delicious. The nuts from the chocolate. Here, want it with the chocolate or without? Well, with, obviously. This chocolate is cocoa, truffle bar, honey mama's Peruvian raw chocolate made with honey and uh, just very moist and rich. So. Yeah, definitely a lot of blackberries. It tastes like blackberries. And then with the chocolate, definitely cuts the alcohol. So they definitely pair together. I think it's delicious, both of them. Chocolate, 2019. Can't really see it with the red light on, but it's a beautiful dark um, color. I racked you can just, it. Um, it's been racked several times. So I took the wine off of the lees. The sediment settles to the bottom. Siphon it out, put it in another carboy. Siphon it out, put it in another carboy. Did that twice. So it's, the clarity is magnificent. Unfiltered, unrefined. Um, so no filtering, no fining. And it's still very clear. Mm. I love it. Yeah. I mean, it's amazing what you were able to to do. In my mother's wet basement. Yeah. It wasn't wet. And the fact that it it tastes so good and it was in your mother's wet basement. Well, I got some serious equipment. I know. You saw it. You've seen it. Yeah. It's no joke, the equipment. But the equipment doesn't make the wine. The grapes make the wine. And the winemaker. And I'm very, well, and the winemaker. Yeah. But, all right. So that's episode one, Team Apollon, of our, our wine, what do we call this? Wine tasting, wine. We recommend in our longevity coaching that you drink wine. That's why we're doing this video. Yeah. Um, probably not much more than those two little tastes that we had there. Um, the research I have to on tell it. Pete to not drink more than those two tastes because he'll have a taste and then he'll forget that he had it. So he's like, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> Let uh, me have another taste to make I, sure I really got the taste. Well, I must be doing well with it because, I mean, people always tell me how young I look and That's my true. skin looks good. And I mean, sleeping eight hours a night helps That's too, true. doesn't it? it does. But I think it's that resveratrol that's in there. Resveratrol is the compound in the skin of the red grapes that activates your sirtuins. And your sirtuins are your longevity genes. So drink your red wine, yeah. um, but also supplement with resveratrol because unfortunately you can't get enough resveratrol from just drinking red wine. So yeah. you gotta also take resveratrol, right. but there's some resveratrol in there. Mm-hmm. You can't taste it, but it's in there. Yeah. Um, and we recommend drinking one glass of red wine each night you could look up the blue zones. You've heard us talk about them. It's pretty popular today. Blue zones. And these are the seven areas around the world that have been now researched and studied, studied quite extensively by several people, um, excuse me, um, 
Walter Longo, Dan Buettner, and um, these are the seven areas of the world where people live the longest. There's yeah. the greatest concentration of centenarians, those people that make it to a healthy, active 100 years old, not, not being in a nursing home. Yeah, who, no. who would care if you were 98, 99, 100, but you're in a wheelchair and you didn't even know your name, no. like dementia out, you know what yeah. I mean? That wouldn't be fun. But guess what? They drink red wine on That's a daily right. basis. So don't overdo it. It's got to be in moderation. You can't yeah. get drunk um, because then the health benefits fall off really fast That's right. and it's not good for you. Yeah. Um, but a little bit of red wine every night with your dinner or whatever. Oh, if you listen to Matthew Walker, that's a whole other subject, though. You should drink your wine earlier in the day because it will disrupt your sleep patterns. Yeah, but this is where if you're tracking your sleep and you can figure out yourself how much you can tolerate at what time in the night. Because, for example, for me, I know that based on tracking my sleep, I can see that if I have one glass of wine at night, um, it actually doesn't uh it doesn't affect, have to yeah. let like i'm still able to get a lot of deep sleep yeah whereas if i were to have more than one glass a night that's when your deep sleep my declines. deep sleep would decline and that's not that's not what we're looking that's for not what you want. yeah so dark chocolate antioxidants red wine resveratrol tiny little bit each night i know it's tempting to have a lot but um you got to you got to be disciplined somehow right and just have that's a little right. bit that's right so i think we should put the chocolate away before we i should. keep eating it yeah on that note all right on that note yeah <laughs> episode one in the can in the can